Ichi go Ichi. Right, the sketchy skull challenge, initiated initiated by yours truly. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking credit for it. Um, only credit that I'm taking is that I created this little template, <laughs> this little simple skull shape, and created a PNG and just went into uh, Procreate and just started freestyling. And um, the fun part about it, at least for me, is, well, beyond doing the illustration and doing the art um, to begin with, which is always fun, of course, but is I shared the template with some fellow artist friends of mine, and they are doing some incredible stuff. And friends online, uh, friends I know in the real world as well, but uh, more importantly, I'm loving to see the creativity uh, exhibited by so many of you out there just from taking this little skull shape and doing something really original with it. Um, as you can see here, I, for some reason I started off with this almost botanical <laughs> theme for the first one. Don't know why. Um, my goal was to kind of fill the shape, fill that skull shape with each image. And I thought it would be fun if every now and then the shape was kind of, the borders of the shape was bursted by um, feathers or leaves as that case may be. Or as you can see coming here, these little heart shapes. And when I say freestyling, these are literally freestyling. The first thought, a first image that comes to mind, uh, I really just use that skull shape template as a guide and let it rip. And that's the whole point of this um, exercise. And that's why I wanted to share it with other artists because I really want, I'm really curious to see what other people's creativity, what flows from their mind and from their creativity. And that's the, you know, essentially the basic premise um, behind it um, is an exploration of creativity. And let's face it, there's nothing more universal than that, than a skull shape. <laughs> it's used for so many things. Generally, so many things kind of negative, you know, like pirates or, uh, or poison or something like that. But for me, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to, uh, fun unifier, because let's face it, uh, we all have skulls. <laughs> you know, kind of morbid, but we kind of do. Skulls and bones, and maybe if, you know, we all do this challenge, we kind of can realize that uh, we're all, you know, essentially human. And, um, and if we're an artist, we're all somewhat creative, or at least creative enough to be able to create imagery and to share it with others. And that is the point. That's the, uh, the gist. Uh, but as you can see here, my, you know, there really was no rhyme or reason. <laughs> I tried to do that abstract sort of Basquiat style uh, Venom piece. And then, uh, and that's coming off of the one, the previous one, which was that sort of furry shaped, uh, brown furry shaped skull. Uh, I think I was going to make Chewbacca out of that one, but sort of bailed on it and got excited to want to do that Venom one. And now for some reason I'm doing this, this sort of weird bunny shape. Um... What's fun for me on this is like so much of the art I do is line art based. And I was kind of having fun just kind of creating these shapes that uh, and that I fill with um, just a light bit of shading and turn them into something semi-dimensional. Um, and for me to work with an absence of line art to bind the shape is really different for me. And, and I was ha I'm having a lot of fun kind of doing that um, creating characters that don't need line art to to exist. And then so and then I'm playing around with like, you know, does the imagery go inside of that skull template or does it go around it or uh, does some of it peek through from behind or does some of it sort of overlap? So that's kind of me, you know, playing around with this. And these, by the way, are the, literally the first initial batch of, um, of this uh, sketchy skull challenge that I'm doing. Um, and as you can see here, I... I Thought, <laughs> I thought the leaves need a little more something. So I decided to kind of render in these really simple uh, ladybugs. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, what do I love to do? I love to do sort of this licensing art. Um, it's kind of, you know, if I'm known for anything, I'm known for doing that, particularly in the uh, toy and game industry. So, um, and to be honest with you, I've drawn so many like Marvel Comics characters and well, lots of DC ones as well, but Marvel and Star Wars characters. I thought it might be fun to do um, a Marvel standard, you know, the sort of Spider-Man one in within that skull shape. Um, if you notice here, the line work of the template becomes a strong feature. Um, and speaking of line work, so having abandoned it for 
for the past couple of you know sketches within this series um, this first batch I decided to kind of dust it off dust off some line work and sort of use that skull shape for what it would naturally be uh, seen on and that is as a little kind of zombie de decomposing zombie shape and um, you can see I kind of played with the hair I, you know I did that as a separate element oh by the way I'm doing all of this in procreate uh, on my iPad uh, using the uh, I got an old-school iPad I mean like original like iPad Pro and original Apple pencil I'm still hanging hanging in tough on those until the next version but um yeah so this is me sort of doing I think it's kind of a send-off to kind of like 70s or 80s style like illustration this sort of um, underground comics kind of look to it that's why I sort of cross hatched it and sort of added that weird feathering in the that sort of decomposing flesh and then chose to make like kind of a sticker feel to it as well by adding that outer um, outline that sort of really bright you know nightmarish green outline and this is where I actually started playing around with different themes um, I decided to do this emoji one for some reason and this like sort of emoji shapes like within again within the skull shape where you kind of see the temp uh, the template outline very prominent however I wanted to actually render them like kind of like the way emojis look on your phone and so rather than like cutting and pasting them I decided to like draw them <laughs> you know individually and it didn't occur to me afterwards that you know the tighter I rendered them um, the more they're gonna look like original emojis <laughs> and so people might see this particular one and may have seen it on Instagram and been like oh he uh, you know he comped in some emojis but I actually as you can see here kind of rendered these uh, ones individually um, and again, because I'm working digitally, I found ways to sort of, you know, duplicate sections and um, draw half of something and, and then duplicate that. And as you can see, like I'm drawing all the facial features, the mouths and the, the tongues and the eyes and the eyebrows and everything as their own elements. So for those who work digitally or want to learn to work digitally, I mean, that is the way. You kind of render everything on its own original layer. Um, and as you can see where that mouth on the upper left is kind of outside of the uh, the boundary uh, doesn't matter because it's on its own layer as in as are all these other little facial expressions and like the little vomit that's coming in there and the little um, that little green heart that I tucked behind one of them yeah it's on its own layer very easy to do and very easy to erase the extra ones uh, the extra remnants of stuff um, speaking of remnants, this is the remnants from the 80s. <laughs> I chose to do this uh, Terminator skull, which feel, felt like a natural uh, take on one of these. And again, got any, any of you guys have seen my previ previous videos, which if you haven't, I suggest you go through and watch them all, <laughs> every last minute of every one. Uh, now, nah, there's some that I'm prouder of than others, so, you know, pick and choose. But yeah, I chose to do, um, you know, a Terminator skull. And again, I work with line art generally. So the fun part for me was just doing like, it's like painting actually, um, painting these shapes, you know, and of course Procreate, the app is, you know, freaking tailor made for people to, you know, to paint images. So, and that's actually one of my favorite ones of the earlier batches, which by the way, there are many, many of them coming. This, this little first round is like, or first wave is, is nothing compared to some of the ones that come with uh, down the road. Um, this is, one where I was like, well, I wanted to kind of do like an American traditional tattoo looking one. Um, I'm sure I didn't follow all the uh, the disciplines and the uh, rules that it takes to do American traditional. And yes, as you guys have seen this um, again on Instagram or seen this this developing here, yes, I know I missed a petal on the uh, on the rose in the back. It should have five petals coming off that centerpiece. Um, generally, I tell artists not to admit their flaws, but I know I'm going to get dinged on it, so I'm getting ahead of it, and I'm, I'm sure that's why everyone else, else says, oh, I, uh, oops, I forgot to do this, that, and the other. They just want to kind of get ahead of the criticism, and so I'm doing it there. Um, but I think it still looks rose-like, right? Is that, that's got to count for something. I, I, at least I hope it does. Um, but anyways, yeah, so this is me sort of trying to make that style. This is This is the point where... I'm sort of playing around with um, different techniques. You know, I'm doing this, I guess what would be considered whip shading um, in real tattoos. Um, trying to mimic that with, um, with, the text with a textured brush and, and the same goes for the highlights and everything. I'm try I'm trying to make it look like it was 
uh, a tattoo on flesh, which is really weird to do on this really flat sort of gray background, which is probably why I decided to sort of um, play, you know, again with that sort of like textured shading and um, stuff on the skull. And of course, I, you know, I played with, um, you know, some shading within the eye socket and, and a little bit of uh, highlighting in here. And I thought, um, you know, changing the backgrounds, I think was, this is the point where I started realizing that, you know, yes, the backgrounds are gonna play as big a role in some cases in terms of the color choices I make. And, um, and so again, because I do so many of these, you gotta understand a lot of these are just like experiments um, working on top of that template. And if I haven't mentioned it before, and I believe I did in the, you know, very early on is that I do have that template available for you. Um, all you got to do is email me at uh, sketchygoichi.com. I'm sorry, sketchygoichi at gmail.com or um, DM me in um, Instagram or leave a comment here um, in the video uh, and I will uh, we'll, we'll make con a connection. I can get you the template so you can do your own because uh, that honestly is the most fun part of these is seeing other artists take. Um, so here's my sort of Ghost Rider-ish one. <laughs> um, it's funny, the skull shape I thought would be a little menacing at first, but the reality is it, it, it tends to make some of these look really cartoony, which is, to be honest with you, what I like about that, the simplicity of the shape that I developed, um, not to toot my own horn, which I guess I just did, um, but I think it lends for more serious, it lends for a flexibility of doing more serious, um, images on top of it or through it, uh, through the template. Um, it also lends for more cartoony ones. As you're going to see down the road, I'm going to do some really super cartoony ones um, in the next batch, in the next wave. So you have to stay with it. And again, um, it's digital, so it's all layering. It's all, you know, the flames are one layer, as you can see as it develops. The, the skull itself is a layer. I filled it, um, the background of the skull with another, and then through the flames on top. And this is the last one on this first wave. Um, this is sort of this kind of rainbow, um, I guess, paint splatter thing. And this is inspired by, in Boston, or at least they used to be, there's a, um, there's a giant gas tank. Uh, and when I say gas tank, I mean like that holds, I assume, like natural gas, like a giant <laughs> massive tank, tank of, uh, you know, I don't even know what else to call it besides that. And um, it used to, or at least I believe it still does, on Route 93 heading into Boston, they have this um, painting and it looks like essentially, you know, splats of color going down the side of it. Anyone from Massachusetts would know this. But anyways, that's the first wave, guys. So please, I want to see yours. Share them on, with me on Facebook. Share them with me on Twitter. Share them with me on Instagram for sure. And sketchy goichi. Live your moment. Get to sketching, y'all. Peace.